Hi everyone, this time we're going to be talking about standing waves and this video specifically standing waves in strings. Now a standing wave is a wave that does not appear to move in time but appears to stay stationary in space. Um, this is a wave that appears so that its amplitude oscillates up and down and up and down. This photo is a live action stop action photograph of a guitar string with a strobe light. Um, guitar strings are oscillating very, very quickly, but if you can capture that image with a strobe light, you see that the strings themselves on a guitar are actually vibrating uh, with different wavelengths, uh, some shorter, some longer, um, and it looks like the string is just oscillating back and forth and back and forth, but that's due to this standing waveform that's been produced. Now, a child on a swing, again, is a good example of a standing wave. Um, if you, if this mom steps away and lets the child just swing, well, the child is going to oscillate back and forth and back and forth. And of course, without any additional input, if the child doesn't pump the swing or a parent doesn't keep adding energy, the waveform will die away. The same exact thing is going to occur in a string. If you pluck a guitar string, don't continuously add energy, it will uh, it slowly die away. But standing waves are that continuous sort of an up and down and up and down motion you get until that dying away occurs. Now when you get a standing wave that just appears to not move it's because energy is continuously being added. So back to the swing analogy this is if you just add that small amount of energy to keep the child swinging at exactly the same amplitude. Um, in waves, what else is producing standing waves? Well, it's a combination of reflections that we've talked about and wave interference that we have talked about. So all of this kind of adds up together to produce standing waves. If we have a standing wave on a string, and so when we're talking about strings, we're talking about, of course, musical strings, like uh, string instruments, guitar, violin, piano, things like that. But we're also uh, talking about linear structures, any sort of a linear structure, um, like a bridge or a cable or a tr electrical power transmission line. All of those are linear structure. A string is going to vibrate in a whole number of one half wavelengths with a node at each end of the string. Now that is very important. Put that down under standing waves of strings. Make sure you write that down. Um, so if this happens to be a standing wave of a string, you are always going to have the standing wave be in multiples of one half wavelength and it's going to have a node at each end of the string. So what do I mean by node? A node is a position with no motion, a position in a standing wave where no motion occurs. So let's say I've got this waveform, and the solid line here represents one position of the wave, and the dotted line is the alternative position. And this wave is going to flop from here to there and here to there back again. The node is a position on that wave that appears not to move, and an anti-node is the position with the maximum amplitude. That is the big flip-flop of position from here to there. That is the anti-node. I'd like to have you in your notes write this chart out, um, and we're going to talk about what are the individual waveforms you're going to get for standing waves on strings. Why do you need to know this? We're going to do some problems with waves on strings, so you have to have a good understanding of these different waves for, waveforms. Now the simplest wave an object can vibrate or oscillate is called its fundamental mode of vibration. So for a string, the fundamental mode of vibration is one half wavelength, a node at each end, and that is going to look like this. Okay, That's the fundamental waveform for a standing wave on a string. There are two sets of names for each of these. This is the fundamental mode of vibration. Musicians also refer to these things as harmonics. So this is the first harmonic. It gets a little confusing because these are two separate names for the same 
form a vibration why well this information has been studied by two groups of people scientists and musicians and because of that there are two names so we're going to give you both because i don't know what your future will hold now for a string each waveform goes up in whole multiples of one half wavelength so the next one is two half wavelengths there's going to be a node at each end so a node here a node here and we have to fit in two half wavelengths so this is going to be one two and then the other one and I'm going to draw these as symmetrically as I can you'll do probably a better job than I the second waveform is called the first overtone remember when we talked about quality and the fact that one vibrating object Oh, we haven't talked about that yet. Never mind. We'll talk about quality in a few minutes. Um, the first overtone is the second way that an object can vibrate. This is also referred to as the second harmonic. The next one, three half wavelengths, node at each end. And I'm going to try and divide this into thirds. So one, two, three. And then this is it's going to vibrate like that. This is the second overtone or the third harmonic. All right, if you see this, the trend, you can just run fast ahead of me. The next one is four half wavelengths, node at each end. Divide this into quarters. And this is the third overtone, or the fourth harmonic. Take a wild guess, yep five half wavelengths node at each end oh boy okay one two three four five did i kind of do that sort of even let's hope so and you can see this keeps going and going and going now i have drawn five but i want you to understand when you start talking about vibrating objects this can keep going and going now, standing waves on strings, uh, for a, a, a string instrument, uh, like a guitar or a piano or a banjo, something like that, you're going to have a note on each end. And that note is going to be where the string is tied down. That's going to indicate you have a note. Um, each string is going to have a different fundamental, and that fundamental is going to be determined by the length of the string. The length of these strings is going to vary. It's going to vary depending upon the thickness of the string. This, each string has a slightly different diameter. And then if you are playing a string instrument and you press with a soft press on that string right there, you choose and say there must be a node right there. So that is going to affect the waveform. This is another strobe or stop action photograph of guitar strings. You pick a node must be right there and that will affect the wavelength and hence the frequency that you're going to get from that string. Now this idea of nodes and antinodes and standing waves can be used to do a whole bunch of wild and crazy things, including breaking a glass with your voice and making a glass resonate with your finger. So let's try this one first to talk about it. Um, many people have done this. Yes, please try this one at home. It's a lot of fun. You need a glass with a handle so that you can hold it down here with your hands uh, so you do not absorb the wave energy by holding the goblet itself. Um, something that is slightly acidic works really well, so you can stick your finger in there and get it slightly pruney. Um, that's what the acid is good for, pruning up your finger. And then if you, if you rub your finger along the top of that goblet, what happens is your finger is going to stick and let go, stick and let go, and it's going to produce a vibration. That vibration is going to be transmitted to the glass. And if you look straight down into the glass, what you see very often is something that's going to look very much like this. You will see nodes where there are places that the wave doesn't look like it's moving, and then anti-nodes where there is an awful lot of vibrational energy. And of course, you can see it just, of course, in the surface of the liquid in the glass. Now, people who can break the glasses with their voice, um, they have to use a good quality crystal. It's going to mean a nice crystalline structure. 
and they have to be loud, meaning a high amplitude, lots of energy, hit the right frequency of that goblet just so. And uh, these are some photographs of, you can see nodes and anti-nodes in the goblet to follow our couple videos of people breaking glasses with their voice, but they're producing anti-nodes. And where there's anti-nodes in those goblets, literally going to shake the glass apart. I'm also going to show you a uh, short video of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Tacoma Narrows Bridge is a classic and iconic piece of video. Uh, the bridge opened back in 1940. Before the year was out, the bridge collapsed. Um, it was in a narrow section of in the Tacoma and Washington area. And what happened was there were nodes and anti-nodes created. Uh, the roadway itself sort of acted like a uh, wing and caused the the roadway to sort of fly and it oscillated. As you take a look at the roadway, uh, notice the nodes and the anti-nodes and the energy that got added to this bridge from the strong fall storms and winds basically shook that concrete apart. Very, very classic piece of nodes and anti-nodes causing a lot of grief. All right, y'all, I will see you later and uh, enjoy the other videos.